The Irish Harp is a design that is featured on a number of our urns. The Journal of Music writes that the harp has been played in Ireland since the year 1000. It is a large wire strung instrument and it is now Ireland's national emblem. Our Ban na Heron Cremation urn is one urn that features harp symbolism with Irish urns. Ireland is often represented as a woman on the ancient Irish harp, which is unique to our Celtic Irish heritage. This elegant Irish urn is named as a celebration of the women of Ireland, or Ban na Heron in Gaelic, and also attributed to the many prominent Irish women our culture has produced throughout history. Eru, matron goddess of Ireland, to which she gave her name Erin, to Erin's Green Isle, Grania Nivoil, Countess Markovich, and the Comanna Man, and more recently, President Mary McAleese. Our urn for human ashes marries together the iconic harp symbol of Ireland with its beauty, form, and grace. A Celtic collar knot represents how the Irish are all bound together for eternity. This urn has a beautiful feel and texture that you will clearly see the hand-thrown nature of the piece. Included with the urn is a handmade oak plinth, created and signed by Irish National Award-winning woodturner. It can be engraved on request. Turlough O'Carolan is a prominent name in Irish history when it comes to the Irish harp. He was born near Nobber in County Meath in 1670. O'Carolan, who was son of an iron founder, became blind from smallpox at the age of 18. According to Britannica, he was prevented by Miss McDermott Rowe, the wife of his father's employer who apprenticed him to a harper, supported him for three years of his training and gave him money, a guide and a horse. He travelled throughout Ireland and was regarded as a composer. His songs have been interpreted and appeared in 18th century collections. One example of an interpretation of his work is Mark Harmer playing O'Carolan's Dream. Harmer said he recorded this piece very late one night and just went with the first take so he was playing the odd rough bits. He likes to think that it was authentic and apparently O'Carolan never played the same way twice. In the early 18th century, harp imagery was used in newspapers, political letters and other printed material. However, it was also seen in the hands of figures such as Hibernia and the Bard. It is new, strong and shall be heard was the optimistic motto of new political organisation of that period, the Society of New United Irishmen. According to Mary Louise O'Donnell in Ireland's Harp, The Shaping of Irish Identity. In 1792, a pivotal moment for the history of the Irish Harp occurred with the Belfast Harpers Meeting. The organisers called it an assembly or a festival, while others refer to it as a meeting where the transcription of the harp music was taken there by teenager Edward Bunting. Edward Bunting of Armagh was a 19-year-old professional musician in Belfast where he engaged at the Belfast Harp Festival of 1792 to note down the music of the last of the oral tradition Irish harpers. O'Donnell writes that although news of the Belfast Harpers meeting of, of 1792 had made it as far as County Kerry in the southwest and possibly also abroad, there were no attendees from County Meath. After this, Bunting noted a steep decline in the number of harp players in Ireland. However, Harp Ireland states that there are currently 1,000 harp players across Ireland, which means it's an instrument that isn't going anywhere. The Irish harp was adopted as the official emblem of the Irish Free State in 1922, and it has remained an image of continuity and stability in Irish politics and society for almost a century.